Okay, so here we are in the living room. Uh, I'm going to start a uh, wall-to-wall, floor-to-ceiling building. Uh, to proceed with that, it's going to be very similar to what I've showed you before. Uh, we're going to come in here, use our utility knife to cut the top of the baseboard away from the drywall, removing that out, um, bring our level plywood base, or sorry, bring our plywood base in here and level it and secure it, then proceed with installing the base cabinets, a top, and then the rest of the building up to the ceiling. So i um, going to grab my utility knife and a pry bar, get these baseboards removed, set this base in, and go from there. Okay, so now that I've got the baseboards removed, um, I've installed my plywood base, typical to what I've shown you before. Um, use the level to um, level it and attach it to the studs. Um, you can see here on the floor, um, it's quite unlevel. We're up 3 8 on that side, down to nothing on this side, and I've got a pack of shims here in the center to hold the center weight. So, um, take your time, make sure you get your, your base leveled perfectly because that's what's going to help you get the rest of your building done. So very important to make sure it's leveled, attach it to the wall. Next I'm going to bring in my three base cabinets and locate the studs on the wall so that I can attach those to the back wall as well. So um, yeah, let's move on to the next step. Okay, so now I've got my three cabinets brought in, um, sat them on my level base, they were all sitting really good. Um, I had to lay out for some electrical that is in this wall that's existing, um, just made a plunge cut with my circular saw, now I've uh, got the finished plates back on. Um, and then I've went through and uh, as I used the same methods as I showed you earlier, I located the studs in the walls and countersunk a hole on the angle to fasten the cabinets down to the wall. So um, now I could proceed with installing my filler strips, um, but I'm going to install them after. I just like to do it that way just to make sure that all the cabinets, doors and everything are functioning and then I put those filler strips in is kind of like my final thing. So um, now I'm going to go ahead and put my top on top of these cabinets so that I can continue building the rest of the building. So that's our next step. Okay, so now I've got the uh, one inch top on. Um, these walls were fairly good so I didn't have to do any scribing or anything detailed to get them cut into the wall. Um, if you're doing this at home and you've got some curved walls or things like that, you're going to have to use a scribe technique to kind of make it all fit. Um, also got all my cabinet doors installed and uh, they're all looking fairly good so um, tomorrow um, I can or the next time I'm on this I can get my filler strips positioned in and uh, kind of be finished with the bottom portion of this unit. Now we're going to work on the top section which consists of one, two, three, four, five, six vertical gables and then um, a series of horizontal shelves in the center portion that are going to be fixed and then a series of adjustable shelves that will be in the two bays that are left down on each side. So um, let's get started on our next step. Okay, so now that I've got my upper section built here, you can see that uh, I've got all my gables installed um, and a top across this quite similar to the um, back door building that I showed you earlier. So um, just a couple of little different things with um, with a big long shelf like this. I have countersunk some screws underneath here and on the top so that I can prevent sagging of this shelf. And when I put these two shelves in, I will do the same just to prevent the sagging if they put a heavy a heavier item on here or whatnot. 
So now that this is all looking good, I'm gonna work on my final trim pieces, which are going to be the filler strips on the sides of the cabinets. Um, I've got a strip here that's gonna go along each side to cover that up. A two inch strip on each one of these gables and a nice trim piece across the front. Um, once all those pieces are installed, um, we'll work on cutting the adjustable shelves that will go into here and uh, start prepping the woodwork for paint. So um, this one is a little bit more complicated than the unit that I showed you earlier at the back door, but um, you can use your imagination. This is about the size of what we did before, and this is about four, three or four times the work. So um, start out small, and as you get better at your woodworking, you can definitely tackle something like this. Okay, so now all of our um, permanent fixed pieces are installed. We're, we've got our shelf pieces cut. Um, we're gonna put those in after the painting is done. Um, we've got um, our paint prep started, so there's some screw holes in here that we've covered over with some patch. Uh, we went through and used our caulking to go in all the inside corners, which you might be able to see the faint white line that's there. Um, everything's been sanded all the edges have been broken, so we are uh, ready to start putting our primer coat down. Um, this is going to help us see the other deficiencies that we can't really see at this stage. So it's uh, one coat of primer at this stage, and then we will uh, inspect our work and uh, see if we need to sand and patch more areas. So um, it's going in really well. We've got some doors to go on these cabinets down below, and uh, yeah, so we're going to get the primer started. So now I've got these three custom cabinet doors built. I've got the frosted glass order to go into that rabbited joint you can see there. I'm going to use some piano hinges um, to mount across the bottom edge of the custom cabinet here. Uh, once I've got them attached onto there, I will then individually attach the doors so that I can check the fit before I put the final screws in the bottom of the door to go across. So uh, I'm going to get going with that and then I'll uh, get off to the next step. Okay, so I'm beginning my install of the piano hinges. Piano hinges just have, they're just uh, flat flaps on both sides with a, with a thin pin down through the center. Um, I really like to use them for situations like this. These doors are going to open downward. Um, it just gives a nice continuous solid hinge across the whole bottom. Um, I'm going to begin to, to uh, set the hinge in a backward manner as wide as it'll go so that I can lock it on this corner perfectly. That way I know that I'm exactly flush on the underside. Um, and I'm setting it flush to this end knowing that it'll be flush on that end and that's what I've built the door to. Um, we've got a center punch here. It's got a rounded tip on it. Fits perfectly into the countersuck tip on the piano hinge. And when you push it, a little pin comes out and gives you an indicator mark into the wood. Then I will use my hammer and set that hole a little deeper. Um, and then I'm running three quarter inch Robertson screws into each one of these holes all the way along this edge. I'm gonna start by indicating one point on this end one point in the center and another one at the other end and then set them and attach those three and then go through and attach the rest. So you can see that just gives a nice piloted hole for the screw to start in. So 
So you want to be very careful when you're running those screws into the MDF wood that you don't strip them out. If you're going to drill pilot holes with a small bit, make sure it's really small because if you pilot it too large and the threads aren't really grabbing then you're not doing any good. Uh, really recommend one of these push pin things uh, for locating the center of the hole. Um, you can't go wrong. So now that I've got my hinge on and it's functioning how I want it to, I'll go through and pound out the rest of these holes and finish in the rest of the screws. Okay, now I've got that attached. All the screws are in, attached to the building unit. You can see it's nice and solid. Um, I'm going to finish off the other two that I need to do. Uh, once that's done, I bring it over the door, line it up along the bottom, get some indicator points, put two screws in, check the function of the door to make sure it's not hitting underneath here, and then uh, once I've got it in the position that I want, I'll final off all the holes um, down the edge of the door and put in all the screws and I should have a perfectly functioning door that doesn't hit up at the top and fits this space beautifully. Okay, so that was the last one. Um, you can see that uh, if I would have pounded up here, I would have probably ripped these two screws out that I originally positioned the door with. Um, so you have to take it off again, re-hit all your, uh, use your punch to hit all your centers, and, uh, and then put it back up and finish putting the screws in. Now when I'm running these screws in, I'm going to support it here so that I'm not straining out the other screws. Again, just go real slow with your drill.
Okay, so now I've got the center door fastened. Uh, I'm going to show you a uh, quick review of how I got the first two screws started uh, and found the positioning to put this door. So um, I flipped this shut, uh, grabbed my door, and lay down at the floor here, put it into position. You can see that it's nice and straight along the top here. So I'm going to look underneath here and see where it's hitting my piano hinge just by sight so that uh, when I pull it, the door up to the piano hinge I'm going to line it up in the exact same spot on each corner um, and that should give me the uh, perfect gap and, uh, and set this door in the right spot. If not, I'll know right away after I put the two screws in. Okay, so I've got the two screws, one on each end, uh, lined up where I sighted in earlier when I had the door in dry fit. So now I'm just going to check it. Um, you can see here, I got a little bit too big of a gap and I got the perfect gap on that side. So I'm going to reset this hole to the adjustment that I need it to go. So um, you can see I need it to go up. So I'm going to go off center with my locator just so that when the screw goes center it pushes the door to the correct area. Uh, then I'll put this screw in last and that shouldn't ruin the positioning of the, of the hinge itself. It'll, uh, the wood is soft enough it'll kind of guide over into the hole even though it's not perfectly centered. So. Okay, so that's much better. Um, I like the positioning of the door now, so now I'm going to go and center mark the rest of these off um, as I showed you before on the other door here. Um, another method if you um, are having a hard time seeing your spots, you can just use a pencil and precisely mark all your centers. So I like the position of this door, I'm going to um, throw a magnetic latch in on both sides so it's, uh, this part gets attached to the door, you can see that it's magnet to the, to the latch itself and when the door is in the in position it's locked up and held up and when it's down it's open ready to be lifted back up to touch the magnet and closed again. So I'm going to install these right in here on the side and uh, and enter the door and that should aid in holding the door up like it, you can see here. So you can see here I've got two of my doors uh, finished. Uh, this one here's got two latches on it. Uh, it's a little bit larger. This one here's got one latch on it. So far I'm going to put the second one on and then finish my install on the third door. Then I'm going to go pick up my glass uh, that I've ordered that uh, fits into this rabbited edge. I'm going to place the glass inside, do a nice finished bead of silicone to hold the glass into there. And uh, once I know it, once I'm confident everything's working well, 
then I'll proceed with painting these doors and uh, filling these filler strips in between here and here. Uh, it depends. Maybe if the homeowner doesn't, I'm going to leave it like this for today, see what the homeowner says. If they want a filler strip added in there, then we can definitely put something in there. Um, me personally, I haven't really stood back to look at it, but um, I would probably just leave them. But uh, yeah. So throughout this install, um, I started by using the center punch to lightly push the holes. I found it hard to find the exact hole to re-hit it down. Since then, I've adapted to using a pencil, marking the exact circle, then bringing my center punch in and punching the hole. Um, with hardware and, um, and anything that you're fastening to, to make like hinges or, or latches or anything like that, it's it's just uh, trial and error to find out which works best for the procedure that you're doing at that time. So um, yeah, just whatever works for you um, based off, you know, the same principles uh, for marking and all that kind of stuff. So. Okay, I've got my tempered glass fit into the rabbited edge on the door. Um, there's enough space here for me to run a silicone bead uh, to hold the glass into place. I'm just going to run a silicone bead on the top and bottom, protecting with the masking tape so that I can get a nice bead in there, squeeze it good, and the extra will go onto the masking tape. And uh, when I'm done putting the bead in, then I can just pull the tape and it takes all the mess with it. So uh, I'm just going to put a bead in this top and bottom tonight. And tomorrow I will proceed with um, fitting the last hardware on and painting. Got my dish soap, just going to get a little on my finger, tool this joint. Now when you tape on both sides you can see the extra just smears out on uh, the tape and you don't have to worry about it, you just pull it off after and, and it takes the clean up with it. It allows you to really pump that silicone into the joint. And uh, pull these tapes off, get you, and then I'll bring you guys in for a close up so you can have a look. 